today it's my pleasure to present on this topic, um, landscape of the teaching of Spanish in China, and especially in the mainland China and in the higher education system. So uh, first, everybody can see my screen? Yes, okay. Um, before I start, I would like to share a little bit of my personal Spanish journey. So um, uh, I studied Spanish for uh, four years in the Beijing Language and Culture University. It's a university whose uh, mission, main mission is to teach Chinese language and culture to foreign students. So on the campus, there are uh, students from all over the world studying Chinese. And that's why the university has the nickname of uh, small United Nation, or maybe tiny will be a better word because it's really small. Um, during my third year, I also studied abroad a year in Barcelona. And it was actually part of the study plan that we all spend a year abroad um, during the third year. And this is quite common among uh, language majors in China. And I'll talk more about it when I get to the part of uh, curriculum and in China and the study abroad programs. Okay, um, in this talk, I would like to introduce first the historical context of the Spanish education in China and followed by the current landscape. And I'm also going to present some results from the two surveys that I ran for this talk. The first survey was for teachers and targeting on their basic information and some concerns on their teaching practice. Um, the second survey was for students of my school, BLCU, um, including questions on their motivation, professional goals, opinions on the curriculum, and et cetera. Um, at the end, I will, uh, I will briefly touch on the future um, of the Spanish uh, teaching in China and citing insights of uh, Professor Lu, uh, who um, Lotus and I uh, interviewed uh, last Friday. Um, yeah. So um, first, the uh, historical context. Um, so Spanish was firstly introduced to China as a foreign language in, the, in 1952. And the China here I'm uh, talking about in this talk uh, is the People's Republic of China, which, is, uh, which was founded in 1949. So there was some Spanish teaching before it, um, especially in the schools uh, run by foreign missionaries um, at that time. But it wasn't uh, systematic and it wasn't for uh, majors in universities. Um, so during the early 60s, especially, um, due to China's good relationship with the post-revolution Cuba, uh, Spanish had the connotation of a language of uh, revolution. Uh, but after that, we uh, came into two, uh, 10 years of uh, hot uh, due to the Cultural Revolution. And, uh, and then it came the new era. Uh, so Spanish and foreign language education underwent growth uh, with up and down under the new reform and open up policy. So first, uh, let's see uh, the first um, period, which is um, uh, from uh, 1952. So as I said, China was, uh, the new China was founded in 49. And then in 52, uh, Beijing held its very first um, international conference the Asia and Pacific Rain Peace Conference, to which um, delegates from 11 Spanish-speaking countries also attended. However, in China, practically no one could uh, provide translation in Spanish for these delegates. And that wasn't looking good as a new country. So um, the prime minister of that time, Zhou Enlai, uh, gave a direct order to found uh, a Spanish program at the Beijing Foreign Studies University. And that was the first program and they started teaching in uh, 1953. So for the program, they managed to find uh, two teachers who I believe were the diplomats that served the previous government before civil war. 
and uh, they pick the students from existing English classes in that university. Um, and that, that after that, as we know, um, in 1959, uh, Cuba Revolution, Cuban Revolution got its victory. And in the following year, uh, China and uh, Cuba founded, established diplomatic relationship and a very good uh, friendship. Um, and because of that, um, some Chinese students of Spanish were sent to study abroad in Cuba during that time. I don't know exactly how many, but uh, quite a few students uh, studied in Cuba. And in 1961, um, the Center of Latin American Studies was founded, entered the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences, which is uh, until today playing an important role in the policy making uh, regarding Latin America. And uh, many first generation Spanish learners in China uh, end up working in this uh, institute. So um, I would like to share some uh, anecdotes that I read uh, from an interview with uh, Xu Shi, Mr. Xu Shicheng, who was one of the first generation Spanish le learners in China and who was uh, also sent to study abroad in Cuba. He was a student of Spanish in Peking University and he said at first in 59, there was really very, very little resources um, for Spanish learning. For example, there was no uh, Spanish a Chinese dictionary at all. So he and his uh, classmate had to use a uh, Japanese a Spanish dic dictionary because Japanese and Chinese share part of the script, the characters. So they could kind of understand something until the first uh, Chinese Spanish dictionary came out in the later that year. And also at first his Spanish was taught by sp French teachers because there was no Spanish uh, professor at his uh, university. So there were two French teachers that were auditing Spanish classes themselves in another university and then come back uh, to teach their own students Spanish. Uh, yeah, so very interesting, but they worked hard. And um, five years later, he was sent to study in uh, Havana in Cuba, where it was very interesting that um, in addition to his classes in the university, he, he also attended many talks uh, held by Che Guevara, che Guevara and other leftist leaders of uh, other Latin American countries who were sheltering at that time in Cuba. And he, every, every summer he worked in the sugarcane fields and he even in 1964 uh, helped dig trenches at the Cuban military bases when Cuba almost uh, got into war with the US. So it was very interesting and I would have to say that it, it was a very holistic study abroad experience that he had. Yeah, so after that, um, from 66 um, to 76, uh, mark the China's 10 year cultural revolution is a, a pretty complicated concept but in one sentence, it was a social political movement in China um, to preserve the Chinese communism and um, get rid of the remnant of uh, capitalism and as well as the uh, old elements of traditional Chinese culture, including the Confuci Confucianism, Confucius. Um, so it had a great impact on higher education as um, academics and intellectuals were widely persecuted and many of them uh, just didn't survive. And um, all colleges and universities were also virtually closed for at least five or six years. And um, the university exam were canceled for the whole 11 years, replaced by recommendation from factories and farms and many um, intellectual youth uh, were deprived of the chances to uh, have higher education. So uh, yeah, 
Mm. Uh, it, it wasn't a good time for uh, academia, but as I said, um, Spanish is a, was a kind of revolution language. So because of that, during that time, um, there were still some uh, publications in Spanish that came out. Um, mainly some discourse, uh, like discourse from uh, Fidel Castro and the discourse of Chinese delegates in international conferences. And, and those were published with Spanish and Chinese texts side by side. So very interesting works. Um, so starting from 1978 is what we call a new era in China. So um, under the leadership of the new leader Deng Xiaoping and his uh, reform and opening up policy, this is a policy that is still the central uh, policy of China today. So China started to let in foreign investments and trade and which generated new demand for foreign language education. So um, higher education and academic activities were resumed. Um, however, the need for Spanish speakers was not high until early 2000s. That was the time when China started to um, build more relationships with uh, Spanish speaking world. Um, so actually in, in the eighties, actually the number of programs and students actually got reduced again. And uh, for example, in my school, in BLCU, the Spanish program wasn't resumed uh, from the 60s until uh, 1994. So it was uh, uh, more than over 20 years of hot for Spanish programs, in, at least in my university. Um, so another policy that is like uh, more recent um, and is the One Belt, One Road initiative. So it basically shows um, China's uh, desire to strengthen its connection with the countries alongside the ancient Silk Road and also the Marine Time Silk Road. Um, so this is also a policy that is widely cited uh, to greatly favor foreign language education in China. Um, and this goes beyond this map because I know that some countries in Latin America also officially participated in this initiative. So um, particularly um, China uh, and the Hispanic world. So China has been enhancing its connection with the uh, Hispanic world, especially through um, investment and trade with Latin America um, and Carib Caribbean countries. So there are um, large uh, infrastructure projects carried out uh, by Chinese company and imports and exports and in recent years expanding to services of bank and, and finance. Well, I have to say that these activities um, left uh, both positive and negative um, influence on Latin America, but that's another topic. Uh, however, uh, for Chinese students of Spanish, this is uh, only positive because this is translated into a very good job market for um, Chinese st uh, students of Spanish. Um, so among the top employers of uh, Chinese Spanish majors are the state-owned enterprises. So these are uh, enterprises that are very powerful and they make the majority of the companies that carry out those um, large infrastructure projects in Latin America. And these in, uh, companies would hire um, Chinese students or graduates of uh, Spanish majors to work in Latin America as translators, um, project managers, and negotiators. And these are a pretty uh, well-paid job. So this is making Spanish a, a kind of a hot major for Chinese students in recent years, and a pretty competitive one too. As you probably don't know, um, in China, students, we choose a major before entering university. So we will choose the major 
according to our interest, of course, but another thing that is uh, very important to consider is uh, our score in the college entrance exam. And um, um, that will also decide um, which um, major we can get into. And Spanish in this year, the score to get into Spanish is uh, raising, like uh, it's pretty high. Uh, so it's uh, getting competitive too. So uh, we come uh, to the current landscape. There's a lot of information in this one slide, but let's start one by one. Uh, first is um, Spanish is still a small language. That's how we call it in China. So because in China, English is the dominant foreign language. When we talk about foreign language, basically we're talking about English. Uh, so it's obligatory from primary to high school and also in college. Um, and other languages, uh, other than Chinese and English, are all referred to as small languages, including Japanese, uh, Korean, uh, Russian, and Spanish, and French, and all the, all the other languages. Um, so uh, the programs uh, has been growing, uh, growing very fast in the 21st century. Um, so in 2016, there were approximately 5,000 graduates. And this number used to be like 200 in uh, 1989. In 1989, there were only 12 programs, uh, 12 universities that have a Spanish program that can give a um, bachelor degree. And by 19, uh, 2016, uh, we had uh, already 96. And it, had, it has reached to more than 100 uh, this year in 2020. Um, so these are the universities that have a Spanish major um, as a bachelor degree, and uh, many also have a master level, but only five have a PhD level. So uh, let's look at here then the distribution in mainland China. Um, so it's widely distributed in 70% of the provinces, but um, there's still a a tendency of concentration uh, in the east part, especially on the coast. So in Beijing, we have the most schools, uh, 16. Beijing's here. Um, and then um, comes uh, Dongbei. Dongbei means in Chinese, um, northeast. So it refers to the three northeast provinces here, Heilongjiang, uh, Jilin, Liaoning, so these three provinces have a lot in common, such as being very cold in winter uh, or having very similar uh, Chinese dialects. So we uh, usually refer to th the three together. And um, they have traditionally good programs of Russian, uh, Japanese, and Korean due to the geographical condition. But recent years, uh, many schools also have uh, Spanish. Um, then comes Shandong, which is also by the sea here, and uh, Jiangsu, Shanghai, Zhejiang, which is the um, economic center of China of the uh, Yangtze River Delta. It's a very important uh, region of uh, Ch Chinese economy. And uh, then we have uh, Guangdong, which is uh, the south and very close to Hong Kong, Macau, and also uh, traditionally and historically very open uh, to the world. Um, so this is the distribution and uh, general landscape of Chinese uh, Spanish programs. Uh, next, I'm going to introduce some universities with Spanish programs in China. Um, the most, the majority of the Spanish programs, as well as uh, language programs in general, are nested in universities specializing in languages. Uh, but there are also uh, programs in uh, um, universities of other related specialization, such as communication, 
and commerce or business. Um, there are also um, some comprehensive universities that have Spanish um, private colleges and universities in Hong Kong and Macau. Um, I'm not very familiar with their systems, but I will just uh, briefly show you some uh, information that I got, I gathered. Okay. So language universities. Um, first, we have uh, Beijing Foreign Studies University, BY in Beijing, where the first, very first Spanish program was founded in 53. And it is also known as the cradle of Chinese diplomats because until today, it has the tradition of uh, training and educating Chinese di uh, diplomats. Then we have my school, Beijing Language and Culture University. Uh, we had a Spanish thing the year 64. And because it's my university, so there's a picture here for advertising. And um, if I was to describe my school in two words, it would be diverse and liberal. And liberal in the sense that there's a lot of intercultural exchange uh, happening outside the classroom and at individual level, which I think is the um, thing that I appreciate most of my school. Then we have, uh, also have very importantly Shanghai International Studies University, Sisu, and Guangdong University of Foreign Studies. And um, also important are Xi'an uh, International Studies University in Xi'an. And uh, Xi'an is also a very important uh, historical city in China and has longer history even than Beijing and Sichuan International uh, Studies University in Chongqing is in the uh, central west of China. There are also many more that are specialized in languages like Tianjin and Dalian University of Foreign Studies, but uh, sorry, I don't have more space. Um, and there are also uh, University of uh, other related specialization that offer uh, uh, good and interesting uh, Spanish programs. For example, the University of uh, International Business and Economics, UIBE, in Beijing. So their Spanish program is, um, has a focus on business and commerce. This is notable, especially in their graduate levels. And their House of Publication, for example, also uh, published books on especially how, how to write contracts in Spanish and something like that. And then we have uh, Communication University of China. This is also in Beijing. And uh, uh, graduates from their Spanish pr program are more likely to work in media and press. Um, and according to their website, uh, apart from Spanish language, they also have courses in journalism and communication as part of their curriculum. Um, and next we have a Beijing Sports University. This is a very interesting university. Uh, many of its uh, students are athletes and they have majors in nutrition, sports management, sports um, psychology, and uh, many more. Uh, in 2018, they also started a Spanish program and they, they have a cooperation with the Real Madrid Graduate School. Um, I think it uh, uh, has a lot to do with the cooperation uh, between China and Spain in football, because as you know, the Chinese um, men's football team is uh, not very good. Uh, but uh, the current Chinese president, Xi Jinping, is a big fan of football. So, there's a need to make it better. And on the country, the uh, Spanish football is uh, like always been amazing. So re in recent years, I know that there have been players uh, or coaches that have been sent to Spain to study abroad. And uh, so it's also important that the athletes and uh, know Spanish to do this uh, communication, I think. It's very interesting. 
So next week, uh, look, let's look at uh, some comprehensive universities that have Spanish program. Um, the first one is, uh, of course, Peking University is our nation's uh, top research university. Um, its Spanish program um, is leading in Hispanic literature and translation studies. And they also encourage uh, students to do interdisciplinary exploration using their um, resource as a comprehensive university. And next we have um, Nanjing University, which is also um, very uh, prestigious. And their Spanish program is starts early, but they, they have been keeping it um, small because they recruit only like less than 20 students per year. And they're uh, pretty proud of their small teacher student ratio and good quality. And uh, this is Central South University in, in Changsha, Hunan, an important one in Central South. And it's good in medicine and minery. And it's, it started Spanish in 2010, 2010. Capital Normal University, it may not be as well known as the Beijing Normal Uni University, but it's, uh, it has one of the best Spanish programs in Beijing. Um, then, uh, least but the not the last but not the least, uh, is Zhejiang University. It's also one of uh, the first modern universities in Chinese history. Um, it's in Hangzhou, Zhejiang. Uh, it's very good in, in engineering and sciences, but in 2016, they also started a Spanish program. Uh, so having Spanish uh, bachelor degree and uh, I think also master degree. So um, I don't know, probably it's getting fashionable for those big comprehensive schools to have a Spanish too. Um, next, I'm going to talk a little bit about private college. Um, in China, the, uh, there are not many private colleges and but uh, I also don't know much about private colleges, uh, but two of them can participate in my survey. The teachers are participate in my survey. And I found this one very interesting, the Beijing City University. Um, it has a major called Spanish plus Portuguese program. So it teaches uh, two languages at the same time. So I'm actually very curious about what their outcome will be because um, like not many uh, programs do that. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. So universities in Hong Kong and Macau, they have a different um, educational system than the mainland China. So I'm also not very familiar, but I tried to look at some information on the internet. And I found, for example, this Chinese University of Hong Kong. Um, it has uh, Spanish only as a minor, um, but it's, uh, the layout, I think, is very similar to the US universities with um, Spanish classes from 100 level, 200 level, and uh, uh, with a certain amount of credits, they can get a Spanish minor. Um, yeah. Oh. And in Macau, they have more focus on Portuguese, I think. And so this is the University of Macau. The department is called a Department of Portuguese. But they have a, a Spanish classes as independent classes and too. Um, yeah, so basically, um, it, it's much easier to get information on University of Macau and uh, Hong Kong because their uh, websites are all in English and uh, much easier to uh, have access to uh, from the US. So I'm not going to introduce too much on this uh, Macau and Hong Kong. Um, program, so everything from here is uh, universities in mainland China. Uh, so I'll talk about the curriculum and textbooks and what a typical grammar class was like 
for me and uh, study about programs and teachers and students. This is this part is a drawing from my survey. Okay. So curriculum, the, these are the classes offered um, in the Spanish programs in China. The basic courses, um, the most important one is called intensive reading. This is a direct translation, um, but it's generally a grammar course. And, but it's indeed intensive because like at least eight to 10 hours per week. Um, then we have uh, extensive reading. This is reading longer text um, for comprehension and not for grammar. So it's, uh, it's called extensive reading. Um, and then we have listening, oral, writing. Some schools have aud audio visual and culture. So unlike, as we can see, unlike in the US where uh, now most language classes are more integrated, meaning that if it's beginning level, it's beginning in all speaking, uh, listening, writing, and uh, reading all together. Uh, but in China, the skills are separated into different classes. Um, advanced classes, I think all schools have translation and interpretation, Chinese, Spanish. Most schools have uh, business and literature and cinema. Um, uh, based on my survey, uh, the teachers also mentioned that the, their university have uh, some um, special courses at advanced level, such as uh, Newspaper reading, uh, Spanish linguistics, not very common, uh, history, and I like these current topics in research and interdisciplinary studies. These are from Peking University, and discourse and debate, etc. So, um, in Chinese programs, um, there are more Chinese instructors than foreign instructors who are native speakers. So did the uh, assignment is that uh, Chinese instructors always teach uh, intensive reading, the grammar course. They also, uh, I think, always teach translation and interpretation, uh, Chinese Spanish. Uh, foreign teachers, uh, on the other hand, are usually assigned to teach Spanish oral. Uh, this is for sure. and. Uh, sometimes uh, extensive reading, uh, listening, or culture, and, and others depend on the university and depend on the year. Yeah. So this is my first, uh, favorite part, textbooks. Oh. Sorry. So uh, our main textbook is this little blue book um, called Modern Spanish, Espanol Moderno, is, uh, it was, the first version was uh, published in 1989. Um, then it got published again in 2005 with a CD. Um, and of course it has a uh, bullfighting and flamingo on the cover. Uh, in 2014, the new version came out uh, in more colors, uh, but, and also the content was changed also but I'm not sure like how much it was changed. Um, so I asked my mom to kindly take some pictures of my book, I still keep it. Um, so this is, uh, there are some pictures. Uh, so this book teaches everything very explicitly. So including phonetics, um, here's the map of articulators and uh, uh, intonation, and here are the curves to go, it goes down or it goes up. And of course, grammar, and so here's the conjug conjugation table of a verb. Yeah, so everything very explained very detailedly and clearly. Um, yeah. But the main part of this book is called a textbook, so it, the main part is a text, textbook. So the texts are short texts um, in a fabricated context in order to teach certain grammar items. For example, in this class in the picture, uh, here are the three uh, grammar items of the class, and they are uh, distinguishing 
preterite versus imperfect uh, aspects, reflexive say, and the distinguishing cell and is that. So basically the most uh, three, three most difficult items in one lesson. And yeah, so the first uh, part of the texto uh, is called Una Pelada. It's like a, a one evening dance party. Um, so this is a, about an imagined um, sin, a scenario of a dance party in some university. Uh, so it is written in a way that as many preterite versus imperfect contrast are used as possible to demonstrate the uses to the students. Yeah, so the, there are many uh, textiles like this and uh, the language is written in a, uh, in, in a good language. What my teacher calls Espanol culto. It's a Spanish that sounds cultured, it sounds formal in some way. Um, but there are also it, the book, uh, which now is more than 20 years old, received some critiques also. Uh, one being that the language is maybe uh, a bit outdated. Uh, it's not very authentic. And uh, also the context, as we can see, are not very relevant to students' uh, real life. Um, and also some also question the order of its grammar items like the subjunctive was introduced, I believe, uh, very early, uh, even earlier than simple past tense. I could be wrong, but uh, I've read uh, similar uh, uh, critiques for uh, questioning the, the order of this uh, grammar item being not, uh, not following the natural order of acquisition. Um, so, uh, the author of the, the textbook is uh, Professor Dong Yansheng, and he's the most important figure in uh, Spanish in China. So um, he was really, really the first, first generation of uh, his, um, Spanish uh, speaker in China. And uh, so I cannot finish this talk or even begin it without mentioning him. Um, he also translated uh, works like uh, Don Quixote, Tang Ji He De, in 96. It, it's a very literary translation version. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so we call him the Taido, meaning pioneer and plus authority, who's someone who's been in this field at, since the very beginning. Uh, so this is uh, Professor Dong. Um, and next, uh, for all the other uh, subjects we have, uh, like listening, translation, and reading, we have uh, most schools will use um, this series of uh, textbooks. It's called uh, New Century Series. Um, and this, these are uh, published by the Shanghai Foreign Language Education Press, um, directed by Professor Lu Jingsheng. Uh, who's also the director of the coordinating board of Spanish programs in Ch uh, Chinese universities. Um, yeah, he was also president of the association, Asian Association of Hispanics. Hispanics. Yeah. Uh, and this was a professor who we interviewed last Friday. So next I'm going to, I'd like to show you um, what a typical grammar class was like at least for me and for my uh, classmate at that time. So it's also kind of a flipped class. So before class, there was a lot to do before class. Uh, we have to learn with the vocabulary list and lexical. Lexical is a key vocabulary with example sentences. And then we need to recite the text, the whole text and then read the grammar descri uh, description and everything. Then in class, uh, the teacher will first check vocabulary uh, mm, through dictation and she'll call someone to randomly to write on the board too. And uh, then she'll teach vocabulary, like um, uh, teaching all the d detailed uses of each word. 
and then she would uh, check recitation of text, like also randomly call someone to recite the text, though. And usually also cut in the middle and call someone else who looks like daydreaming to follow and take it uh, with the recitation. And then she would teach the text and down to uh, every detail and every preposition, every article. Um, and then we will learn the grammar and practice grammar uh, with a conjugation exercise and translation exercise. So conjugation will be uh, the teacher calling, well, Linxi give me the verb uh, in perfect tense, uh, first person singular. And then I will say the Bahaba. And translation as the teacher will give us um, sentences in Chinese and we'll translate them into Spanish. Yeah, so this can go, this, this can go uh, uh, for a quite long time, uh, maybe the whole class. And next I would also like to introduce um, some standardized tests that, that we have for Spanish majors and language majors in China. Um, so for Spanish majors, there are two national level uh, exams, level four and level eight. So level four is taken at the end of second year and they roughly correspond to daily uh, somewhere between B1 and B2, but it has a, of course a focus on the grammar. Um, so all Chinese, uh, Chinese uh, Spanish majors have to pass at least level four to get a bachelor degree in Spanish. Uh, but level eight is taken before graduation. Uh, we don't have to pass it to get a degree, but it's better to pass it. And it roughly corresponds to daily B2 to C1. Um, but many uh, students, especially those in Beijing or Shanghai, also go to Instituto Cervantes to get a um, B2 or C1 uh, certificate to have a more international renowned uh, level. Um, then also everybody in, in Chinese universities have, has to take college English test level four and level six. So those are obligatory for all college students in China. And uh, we have to pass at least level four to get any bachelor degree. And there are also tests for English majors, level four and level eight. Uh, we could, as Spanish majors, we also could take, take them. So it didn't hurt taking them, so I took all of them. And the good things, I, what I like about this test is that they were very cheap um, comparing to Delhi or TOEFL. So yeah, I, in, it provides a standard within the nation. Um, study abroad programs. Um, so actually most universities, uh, at least those who participate in my survey, have study abroad programs. Only one of them uh, did not. Uh, most schools allow students to choose um, whether to stay in China uh, for that time or st uh, study abroad. Uh, and students so mostly study abroad for one or two semesters and usually during the third year. So the general idea was that during the first two years we were in China, we learned all the grammar. And by the end of second year, we have finished learning all the grammar of Spanish and we're ready to go somewhere to practice in the environment. So taking um, my experience as example, in my school, in my year, we had two options. One is um, going to Spain. The uh, tuition or matricula was uh, paid by the university, but there was no scholarship, meaning the parents had to pay for the living expense. Um, option two was founded by the Chinese government. So uh, it was free. And uh, in addition, Chinese government will send those students uh, monthly paychecks to support their living in Mexico. So my study abroad year, as I mentioned, I went to the uh, university, Autonomous University of Barcelona, and I was in the Department of uh, Translation Interpretation slash 
Asian studies. So as uh, Chinese exchange students, we had to take classes together with the local students, which was quite challenging for us. Um, except for these uh, Spanish for international stu students, it's because this school has a very large number of uh, Erasmus or in, uh, international students. So, um, but uh, almost all Chinese students, we were tested to the highest level. So we were good. Um, the, during my time studying abroad, I also explored other things. So I took a class called La Psicologia, La Psychology, with a very good professor. And uh, that was the course that got me interested into linguistics. And it was the start of everything else after that. So I'll show you some of my life. Um, I, so I made friends with uh, some local students who liked bubble tea and uh, K-pop. And that was not surprising uh, that they were in East Asian studies. And with my Chinese friends, we also traveled around. So this was a uh, national day in Madrid and the, the soldiers in parade, they insisted in taking a picture with us. And they also insisted in speaking English all the time with us. Although we were like responding in Spanish and they kept speaking English, very interesting. And I also inevitably got somehow involved in the uh, Cat Catalonia independence uh, movement. So I, I, I bought myself this flag, Cat Catalan flag. So that was my year of uh, multilingual uh, study abroad. Life. So uh, from here, I would like to present uh, some uh, results from my two surveys. Uh, one is for the teachers. So I got 33 responses from 16 public universities and two private colleges. So the number of teachers, most of them have more than 10, but there are also smaller programs that have uh, only two to four uh, teachers. However, uh, all programs had uh, at least one uh, foreign teachers. So native speaker teacher is a must have for Chinese programs. And their background are mostly common in uh, literature or translation. Um, linguistic is not very common, but um, most of the professors with background of linguistics uh, got their degree from Spain and they were mostly in comparative linguistics or contrastive linguistics of Chinese and Spanish or corpus linguistics. Uh, students, uh, most of the students, we don't have any prior contact with Spanish before college, especially before, uh, especially because Spanish is not commonly used in China at all. Um, the bigger program, uh, programs have more than 200 students, but uh, also half of them uh, have only less than 150. Uh, when that's about like the motivation of uh, the students, and it was very interesting, interesting to see that the most common chosen was that I am good at English. Um, I believe I have talent for languages. So they had a positive experience with their L2 English and they are confident with their uh, language aptitude in general. Whereas uh, the second one is I want to study a new language and my exam score uh, coincided with the Spanish acceptance line. So generally students make a list of several languages that they want to get into, but uh, what they get eventually depend on their score and uh, um, ranking and the score of other people too. So it didn't have to, be, have to be Spanish for some people, but it just happened to be Spanish. Um, also, many uh, agree that um, they got into Spanish because they promised a good job. So when I, uh, then I have a question, uh, like asking them to specify their motivation in an open uh, form of question. And uh, 
football was a big part. Um, and also st students say Spanish sounds beautiful, Spanish is cool, and uh, some of them were also attracted by the uh, pop cultures of the Spanish speaking countries. And also some of them mentioned that Chinese writer Sun Mao, uh, she was a Chinese uh, writer famous for her travel books and she got married to a Spanish guy, Jose. So in China, actually many people know that the name Jose, Hexi, is a Spanish name. And many people firstly got interested in Spain or, uh, and this culture from uh, reading her books. And of course, there are also some students that didn't know what they were doing, uh, but uh, most of them like are okay with uh, learning Spanish as their major. Okay, so the students, um, I had a question like, uh, did you prefer uh, working directly after graduation or uh, going to graduate school? And 53% chose graduate school and only 1%, which is 6%, uh, said that um, he or she would uh, work uh, immediately. And this was somehow uh, surprising to me because um, up until five years ago when I graduated, most students would choose to work immediately after graduation because at that time it was so easy to get a job and get a good job. So most people will just work. Um, but I guess in these recent years, especially this year due to COVID-19, the market is much more competitive. And so many students will choose to have another higher degree before they enter the uh, job market. And among those who choose to uh, go to graduate school, uh, most of them, the majority, uh, prefer to, uh, to do a master in Spain. Uh, only 3% want to go to Latin America, and uh, an increasing uh, percentage now also want to go to English-speaking countries like US or UK. And the most uh, popular concentration or subject that they, they want to study in graduate school is translation and intercultural communication followed by business. Um, linguistics, not very popular. Um, so work, so the 41% that said not sure answered both sides of questions. Um, so for those who said they want to work or not sure, um, if they choose to work, they want to be a uh, uh, teacher uh, or work for the state-owned enterprises that I mentioned. Uh, they also like, uh, also uh, almost half of them choose to be uh, translators or work for private companies. Um, so the survey, uh, the survey also asked for teachers' concerns as a Spanish in instructor in China. And their top concern um, is the rating, uh, ranking question. So it generates a score for me. So the top concern is that um, the extra uh, workload due to a lack of teachers and the big uh, uh, student teacher ratio. Uh, and second is lack of language resources and materials, especially authentic materials. Um, they also want the contents of the textbooks needs to be renewed. Um, yeah, but they seem to be not worrying much about the uh, standardized test uh, and burning pressure. Other concerns include that students' oral practice outside the classroom is not enough due to a lack of a language environment in general in China and difficulty in selecting online materials, uh, also how to improve pedagogy to more provoke students' uh, interests. Um, on their suggestions, um, I give them some options um, based on my insider intuition, and they could choose more than one. 
So the most uh, mostly chosen was keep the textbook up to date um, and slow down the expansion of programs, reduce the student teacher ratio, uh, and also promote the reform of ped pedagogy and uh, curriculum. But again, there was uh, not much um, desire to reform the standardized tests. Okay, this is the last uh, uh, survey slide. So I asked uh, many, I gave the students many statements and asked them to like, uh, uh, to which degree do you agree with the following or not agree with the following statements. So one is at least agree, seven is most agree. Uh, so the, the results are, uh, opinions are uh, much divided or varied. Uh, but I just eyeballed uh, some tendencies and summarized here. Uh, one is that students think they learn grammar and reading more effectively than speaking and listening, which is not surprising. Uh, and also students are much more interested in foreign teachers class than the grammar class, uh, which is also not that surprising. Uh, but they think they learn effectively in the grammar class uh, most of them, and where a large portion of them agree that the classes are effective uh, or helpful. And students student consider translation exercise a good way to practice in uh, or Spanish. So more than half choose uh, six or seven, meaning that they think uh, translation is a good method. Um, and also they feel um, more nervous speaking in foreign teachers' classes than Chinese, cl Chinese teachers' classes. So this shows that um, although many Chinese students don't find um, grammar class or the translation method very interesting uh, or motivating, they do think they're helpful uh, in their language learning, which was uh, somehow uh, surprising for me. Uh, so future directions, um, here I'm citing mostly Professor Lu's uh, insights uh, during our interview on Friday. So uh, there will be like extension of Spanish teaching from universities to secondary schools uh, and then primary schools and then last the society. Um, and also from teaching just the language to language plus something. For example, in um, his university, the Shanghai International Studies University, they are now offering master in law and Spanish, or something and Spanish. Um, so uh, also internationali internationalization, and um, he means more like a exchange or collaboration with the foreign schools. Like here uh, now, there are many two plus two programs. Um, like the students spend two years in China and plus two years in uh, a foreign university. And uh, some of them even get two degrees. Uh, yeah, and also at graduate level, sometimes they get two uh, master degrees uh, spending one year in each country. Um, and also teacher training, um, he doesn't get into much detail, but I think this is an important area and also, emerging from my survey with the teachers, especially uh, teachers from smaller programs or, smaller, or uh, uh, smaller cities, those teachers wish they could have more chances to be trained uh, uh, abroad. So um, as a wrap up, um, so Spanish is always a demographically strong language worldwide. But in China specifically, the recent economic connections with China and the Hispanic world provide a favorable ground for Chinese uh, uh, Spanish education in China. And this example also shows that the, uh, a country's economic development, um, international relations and policies can have a great impact on this foreign language education. This might, uh, this might be especially the case in China 
but I believe it's true in many other countries to different degree too. Um, I would like to end this talk with a quote from Ophelia Garcia. Uh, Spanish is not a mark of linguistic nationalism, but a tool of communication that can also come past those who speak it as a second or a foreign language. As foreign um, language students, we chose, we had the agency to choose uh, Spanish to become part of our lives and our career. So um, I think this shows that Spanish is an emerging global language, uh, especially with the fact that it is being more and more widely uh, taught even in China, a country that is so geographically re remote from and culturally remote from the Hispanic world. And uh, um, book re recommendation, there is a book, uh, I just knew it last week uh, by uh, Jose Maria Santos Brovila, uh, his title is Spanish Teaching in China, His Redevelopment and Current Situation. Um, so uh, it has information on both mainland China and also uh, Hong Kong, Macau, and the uh, Republic of China, which is Taiwan. Uh, muchas gracias. Uh, thank you very much for listening.